Hi there. One of my favorite tools that I use on Linux command line and uh, quite addictive and I've been using it since the earliest days I started working on Linux since 95 timeframe has been a tool called Midnight Commander. If you're not aware of Midnight Commander, maybe new age people who are using graphical user interface and switching to terminal might find this quite new. It's a very powerful tool. It's a Swiss Army knife. It can let you do a lot of things and it can be quite addictive because once you get used to it, you want that tool to be there everywhere you go with Linux deployment. By default, these days, most distributions don't have the tool installed until unless you're using Slackware or distributions like that, the old school distributions, they may not come pre-installed. You can always install it via package manager. So if you're using something like Ubuntu or you can, you can do app, you sudo apt install MC. Or if you're using Arch Linux, you could always use pacman minus S MC and this gets this tool installed. Midnight Commander is reminiscent of a very popular DOS based textual user interface or textual file manager called Norton Commander. Norton Commander is very popular in MS DOS platform, so beware, many people were like avid users of it. There were also freeware variants of Norton Commander, which was one of my favorite was Volkov Commander, which is extremely lightweight and almost as good as Norton Commander, in my opinion. Midnight Commander was inspired by this tool. And uh, from what I heard is that Midnight Commander was the precursor for a couple of these early generation graphical user interface file manager called the GNOME file manager and then later versions of Nautilus, which is the default file manager that you use from GNOME. They all have the genealogy dating back to the textual user interface called Midnight Commander. How do you get started on it? You can just type MC once you install it and you're greeted with this interface. This is a textual user interface which once you use, once you get used to it, you don't have to worry about all the basic commands that you use like ls command because you see the listing of the current directory here. It's a two pane window manager. I mean, two pane file manager, sorry, file manager. So you can switch between these panes by using tab key like this. It shows currently in the left hand pane, it shows I'm in under home directory slash training slash Linux fundamentals. And I can press a tab key here and I can navigate across to different folders. Maybe I can go to one of the folder, like say new folder it went into this particular folder. It's like typing the CD command, CD slash new folder, CD new folder, right? You don't have to type a lot. Using simple up and down arrow keys, you can navigate around, you can go up, you can go up, you can go to different folders, you can go, you can come up, you can navigate all these files and see what files exist. By default, it shows you the file or the directory name and their size and their modification time. You can change what is being displayed in the space. A lot of things are customizable in the Midnight Commander. One of the things common uh, features is that copying files, creating directories. Let's say I want to create a new directory here in my home directory right now and my home directory that shows up as a symbol in here. So here I can create a new folder. To do that, I can just press the F7 key. You can see that the status line shows F1 for help F2 for menu, function key 3 for view, edit, copy. You can see MKDR shows up as 7. When you see 7, you're supposed to press the function key 7, the F7 key, right? So you press the F7 key, you get a nice dialog box. Ready for it, I select something based on what is selected underneath. I can change that and say S folder MC or something. There's a new folder got, that, got, that, that got created. Now I can enter this folder by just pressing enter inside it. You're now inside this folder, which is quite empty. You can go up. When you see a dot dot, you can press enter on it. It'll go to the parent directory. You can go back into this folder. Let's say I want to copy a file. I press, press the tab key to switch to the left hand pane. I can just copy a file from here. Let's say a.txt. How do I do that? Press F5 key. It was quite quick, right? It's It almost happens like a jiffy. I mean, it's, it's almost like uh, I don't have to really remember to type CP and blah, blah, blah. I don't have to type that commands. Just press the F5 key and you get a dialog box. The dialog box shows copy file a.txt with source mark star. So this file is being selected. Where do you want to copy to? The folder is less selected here, the destination folder. You can use the tab keys to navigate around these box. All of these are checked boxes that lets you set various options and press enter the file got copied. Maybe you want to select a couple of files and copy it. All you need to do is keep the cursor, I mean, keep the cursor when the file is highlighted. Maybe you can select them by using insert 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 you can see that files are being highlighted for whichever i type insert in here highlighted in yellow you can also press insert that you need this way and i can press f5 copy six files the source mark start let's copy 
You can also move files by pressing F6 key. You can also edit files and I found the editor is very very user friendly. Before people got used to nano editor and pico editor, before these two editors became popular in the command line, I used to recommend an editor that comes bundled with Midnight Commander which is called as MC Edit which is a very, very new by friendly editor. So if you want to edit any files in here, let's say this hello.c, I want to edit it, just press F4. And you can just type things naturally, no special things like command mode, edit mode like in Vim editor. But yes, this editor is very simplistic. It's not, it does not have a lot of features. In my opinion, I find Nano to be more feature rich than this editor. It's a very, very simple editor and you can see options shown here. F2 to save, F3 to mark, F4 for replace. Can perform very basic mark, copy, replace kind of operations like clipboard operations. But if you want to save this file, you can press F2 to save, save it, and you can press F10 to exit. Comes back out into this window. But yeah, my terminal setup is a little mess, so you can see that uh, yeah, some things might not look as consistent. But you can try pressing Control O, Control O one more time, it comes back. When you try Control O, Control O combination, it just goes out of this MC editor where you can type in command line, you can switch back to command line and run some commands, type control O back to get back to MC. You can also see the command line right there where you can type in commands. So you can run some very basic commands like say ls, does make sense because ls command, you don't have to run this, you can always see this here. But when you type ls here, it executes the command and you can see the screen got of, sort of refreshed. Just say control O to go see the output. In some terminals, the ls output be shown, but this terminal because of the transparency setting may not be very compatible, but otherwise you'll see the output as here. Most of the file and directory related operations can be done with simple keystrokes with MC. So you press F9 key, you get access to the menu, the top bar, right? You can get access to the top bar by the pull down menu by pressing the F9 key. Press enter, it pulls down this menu where you can select a lot of options. You can go to the file menu and do things like copy, change mode, create a hard link, create a sim link change ownership, change attributes, all these common options that you normally use commands for can be done with simple keystrokes, the MC command. You can also go to the command to use some extra features. You can also add custom user menu for where you can add new commands of your choice. You can see a whole lot of features like compile and link currency file, right? I press enter. I think it tried to compile it. You don't see the output though, strange. I should run this in the real command line. Maybe it'll work because of the transparency setting. Some of the command output is not shown in this terminal. Right. Anyways, but otherwise you should be able to see a lot of features in here this way. One of the features I really liked about MC command in the early days is the ability to connect to remote FTP servers or SSH servers and copy, upload and download files not naturally. Uh, I have a Raspberry Pi board powered on with Ubuntu running on that too. I want to connect to it. Let me try. Let me try this. I can go to the right hand pane. There's a left pane, there's a right pane. So to select the right pane and here, you can see that there's something called SFTP link and shell link. I'll use shell link, which is nothing but SCP. So I can just type in the machine details here. So if you press F1, it'll tell you how to use this. See, you can type the shell machine options and features. So I'm just going to use uh, all the different options that are there, right? So I'm just going to just type it as SH colon um, my user ID at IP address. Oh, it's typing for the, it's expecting for the password. So I'll type in the password right here. You can see it actually connected via SSH to the remote machine. So on the remote machine, I have some file and I want to copy that file file into my local machine. I can do that. Uh, I've logged in as a user called Chandra. So I can only go to the home directory there. You can see I went to the home directory on the remote machine and there are a lot of files in here. Let's say I want to copy one of those files, let's say intro into this particular folder, press F5. From the left hand, from the right hand pane, it's copying back to the left hand pane. Yes, you got the file here. If you want to upload a file, like I have this Linux file type for TXT, which I used in one of my earlier video <coughs> videos. <coughs> Sorry, this. <coughs> so I can just copy that file in here by pressing F5 and press Enter. The file got uploaded onto the remote machine. So you can actually, if you're all you have remote accounts maybe on a cloud like Linode or any of these kind of accounts and you have SSH access to it, you can use this to upload download files using simple textual user interface. You can navigate files on the remote machine and you can also copy files. You can also view those files and edit them. Maybe you want to edit 20 files in here. Let's say I can go to this b.txt, press F4. 
I can still change any files. In there. When I save it, it is saved remotely. The files are saved remotely. It'll take some time and yeah, you can exit. Yeah. Sometimes because of the kind of terminal I'm using it may not be compatible. So when this happens, just say control O, control O back. Things get fine, right? I started seeing this kind of issue with this terminal which I'm using, the terminal emulator called Kitty. It's a very nice terminal emulator, but I start seeing some issues. I think it's got to do with the transparency settings which I have set up on the terminal. So otherwise, this should have worked without a problem. There are lots of options available. You can customize the options. And one of the things is that I don't like this. This is very Spartan DOS-like theme. If you worked on MS-DOS and use Norton Commander, this is the kind of color layout that you'd find on that tool. But if you want to change that, you can change the appearance to different forms. I think I was using one of these forms. I'm not sure. Is it nice dark? Yeah. I like this better. So I can select this. You can change the themes the way you want. It's a very powerful tool and um, you can edit a file. You can also view a file. If you don't want to edit it, you can just press F3 to view a file. And it's quite smart. In fact, when you say F3 on a file, which is a binary file, let's say this hello is a binary program, press F3, it'll give you, it'll give you this format. But you have an option to select in this hex dump format by using F4. Yeah, hex dump format also. It's quite a powerful tool if you know how to use it. But yes, one thing I have faced with MC command is that you can delete a directory tree in just two keystrokes you want. F8 is to delete. You can delete an entire directory tree or even a single file. At least on the command line to delete a directory tree, you have to type rm space minus rf space and you have to type the file name and all that. But here, just a single F8, enter, gone. The directory tree is gone. It'll ask you a question. Yeah, it asks for confirmation because they enable that option and the default is selected as no, but you can select yes by using the arrow keys here. Press so you should be a little careful. Yeah, if you it's a powerful tool, so it, with power comes responsibility. All of us know that, right? And this tool is quite useful for new buys. But if you're a person who like to use shell for automation, I would recommend not using this tool in the initial days. So you get comfortable with the command prompt. But once you become a power user, you want to be on speed, this tool is very useful to work on a terminal, right? So this is what Midnight Commander is all about. So I hope you found this video useful. If you do find this video useful, please do comment and let me know what you think about this uh, videos I'm, uh, videos I'm uh, sharing. And I will make more videos in the same lines accordingly. Thank you very much. Hope to meet you in future video sessions. Thank you.